How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at bond polarity and electronegativity. So our objectives will be to describe what is meant by bond polarity, predict bond polarities based on electronegativities of the bonding elements, and describe bond polarity in terms of dipole moments. So let's get at it. Covalent bonding. A little review. Covalent bonding is when electrons are being shared between two atoms. So electrons spend time around both of the atoms. They're sharing those electrons. And this can be done in a fair manner where they spend equal times around both of the atoms. Like in this moving example, you can see the electrons are moving and they're spending approximately the same amount of time around each hydrogen atom. Or the sharing could be unfair where the electrons are hogged by one atom more than the other. So here's an example where fluorine is kind of hogging those electrons. They're supposed to be sharing both those electrons, but they're spending more time around the fluorine than they are the hydrogen. This is where we get into bond polarity. So bonds that share electrons evenly are considered nonpolar. So if you take a look at this example right here, all right, the electrostatic potential, or basically the charge, is neutral through the whole molecule. It's nonpolar. There's no north or south pole. There's no positive or negative pole. But sometimes bonds can share them unequally. So if electrons are shared unevenly, they're considered polar because they have a north and south pole like a magnet. So you can see on this end, we end up with a negative charge in this end, we have a positive charge because the electrons are spending more time around this end of the molecule than they are around this end. So electrons being negative cause this end of the bond to be negatively charged. Yeah, there you go, that's what I said. There it is in words. So what determines bond polarity? Well, we're gonna introduce a new vocab term. It's called electronegativity and it's the attraction for electrons in a bond. It's going to measure how greedy an atom is for those shared electrons. It's how much do they really want to hog those electrons from the other atom. The more greedy an atom is for electrons, the greater electronegativity it is, which means it's going to hog the electrons more. And it's measured on a 0 to 4.0 scale, and fluorine has the highest electronegativity. It's the most greedy for those shared electrons. So if the atoms have the same electronegativity, they're going to share them evenly because they have the same amount of kind of greed for the electrons. So it's going to be like a tug of war where they are evenly matched. So you can see in this first example where hydrogens bonded with another hydrogen, they have the same electronegativity of 2.1. So in this tug of war, it's going to be a stalemate. They're going to have to share those electrons evenly because one doesn't want it more than the other. They have the same electronegativities. But in this other example where we have hydrogen bonded to fluorine, one atom has a greater electronegativity, and it's fluorine. Fluorine has a much greater electronegativity than hydrogen, so it's not going to share those electrons evenly. We're going to get a polar bond. Those electrons are going to spend more time around the fluorine than the hydrogen, so we're going to end up with a polar molecule where one end is slightly negative and the other end is slightly positive. So dipole moments, how do we express this polar bondness all right so let's break down the word dipole it means two poles di means two pole means pole just kind of like there's a north and a south pole or a positive and negative pole on a magnet we have the same kind of thing going on with these polar bonds so a dipole is two electrical charges of equal magnitude but opposite sign that are separated by distance so you can see this end of the molecule has a negative charge going on and this end has a positive charge the magnitude of each is equal but they're oppositely charged and they're separated over a distance so we have a dipole then we have dipole moment which is the quantitative measure of the magnitude of a dipole so it's putting numbers to it how much is that charge we're not going to cover that in this video uh, so yeah don't worry about that as far as the scope of this video so how do we indicate these dipoles? If we're drawing these Lewis structures and we have these polar bonds, how can we show the polarity of these bonds? One, we can show partial charges with this fancy looking S thing. It's, I'm pretty sure it's a lowercase delta. So you do a little delta with a plus showing that there's a partial charge on the hydrogen and you put a positive because it's a partial positive charge. And then the same thing, but for the fluorine where it's a partial negative charge. So you get a little boom, there you go. So the less electronegative element ends up with the positive charge because it's the one losing the tug of war, right? Fluorine's winning that tug of war, it's hogging those negative electrons more. So the negative electrons spend more time around it, making the fluorine negative and the hydrogen positive. So, or this is kind of my preferred method. I like doing this. Uh, you draw a little arrow thing. So the arrow points toward the electronegative 
uh, atom, and you kind of end up making a plus sign over the hydrogen, right? So if I'm drawing this HF and I know fluorine is the negative one, I draw a little arrow, a little arrowhead, and then I do a little, you know, little tail feathers for the arrow, making kind of like a plus sign right there. And that's where the positive charge is going to be found. It's going to be found over the hydrogen. So practice. Determine the bond type and indicate the dipole where applicable. All right, so you see we have the chart up here with the element and their electronegativities. Pause it, try it out, and then I'll resume it and see how you did it. All right, cool. So HCl, we got 2.2, and Cl, we have 3.2. So, hey, they're uneven. They're going to be polar. So we have a polar bond. So first step, it's polar, and now let me indicate the dipole. Well, chlorine's the more electronegative, so it's going to be the slightly negative, and hydrogen's going to be the slightly positive one. All right, let me take a look at ClF. Well, Cl is 3.2 and F is 4.0. So, hey, they're not going to share those electrons evenly. So, which one's going to be more electronegative? It's fluorine. It's going to have the partial negative charge, and chlorine is going to be the partial positive. Uh, F2. All right, well, F is 4.0, and so is the other F. So, these are going to be a nonpolar bond, no dipole because there's no polarity. And then I, B, R. So let's see, I is 2.7 and B, R is 3.0. Hey, they're not the same number. One of them is more electronegative than the other. They're going to hog those electrons. So we're going to get a polar bond. Not very polar because the difference is very slight, but they're not going to share those electrons very evenly. So we're going to get a slightly negative on the bromine and a slightly positive on the iodine. So there you go. Summarize. Describe what is meant by bond polarity. Predict bond polarities based on electronegativities of the bonding elements. And describe bond polarity in terms of dipole moments and dipoles. So I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.